Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So today, as you can probably tell from the title, we are going to be talking about Ramadan today. Why are we talking about Ramadan, you ask? Yeah, so uh, Ramadan is happening right now. It's a month long thing. It's going on this entire month. And, you know, we grew up Christian. We are Christians. You know, we just thought that this was a good time for us to try to learn something new, try to, to, try to get something out of this and, uh, and just see what we can learn. Yeah, so let's get into it. Yeah. been lots of Ramadan content swirling around YouTube. I've been watching a ton of vlogs and a lot of the Muslim influencers that I watch are all celebrating Ramadan. So I just decided to do kind of a deep dive and educate myself. So let's talk about it. Yeah. yeah. First thing is what even is Ramadan? What's the history? Like why does Ramadan exist? What does it mean? Yes. Go. Excellent question. <laughs> I had the same question. Okay. So from what I understand, and please, if um, you're Muslim and you celebrate Ramadan, correct me if I'm wrong. This is just from the research of a non-expert, non-Muslim person. So anyway, um, what I learned is that this is the celebration of the day when the Prophet Muhammad received his revelation from God. That's what Ramadan is about. It's a month long. It consists of fasting self-reflection, uh, self-improvement, spending time with family, charity, um, and a few other things too. Yeah, okay, so the first thing that kind of stuck out to me as something that like just a Christian might learn from Ramadan is mm -hmm. this outward focus of Ramadan, that a lot of it is about like helping other people. There's, yeah. a, there's this charity aspect to it. Yeah, absolutely, and what I've seen also is like, it's like the intertwining of different families too. Mm. So when they come together for their meals, people are sharing things with each other, they're visiting each other's families, but they're also very community focused, like you said. There's always an idea of what can I do to improve my area? What can I do to help my community? What can I do to help someone who's less privileged than I am? And it's just such a sweet thing, I love mm. it. Yeah. So the next thing that I want to talk about is, is this aspect of Ramadan that's actually kind of familiar for a lot of Christians, yeah. uh, and that's the fasting element mm -hmm. of it. And I think fasting, you know, it's a Christian spiritual discipline, but it's kind of like the black sheep <laughs> yeah. of Christian spiritual disciplines. It's, yes. it's kind of like off to the sides, like, oh, we, you know, you pray, read your Bible, oh, and, and fast. <laughs> Um, but it's kind of more central to to Ramadan. So tell mm -hmm. me more about that. Yeah, so it's a 30-day fast. So the fast is from sunrise to sunset. And really what I learned from this, like I knew that fasting was a part of Ramadan and I honestly thought it was the only aspect of Ramadan, which why I thought that, who knows. Anyway, so the rules around fasting are actually not as strict as I thought they were. Mm -hmm. So really it's basically if you're physically able and if you are like mentally and emotionally able to handle the fasting because um, I mean, we're not gonna sugarcoat it. Like fasting is not easy, right. especially yeah. for that long of a time for an entire month. Like that's a really hard thing. You have to be in the right frame of mind to be able to do that. Yeah. So, and there are meals, but they just don't happen from that time period from sun up to sundown, right? Exactly. So there's something called the sakhur. I, I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm so sorry for butchering that. Um, and that's the small meal before sunrise. Mm -hmm. So usually what I've read is it's about around like 4 a.m. which I'm like, what oh, could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what 4 a.m. looks like. Oh, me either. Yeah, so it's like a small meal. Um, people usually have like cereal, breakfast food, that kind of thing. And you drink a lot of water to be able to help you get through the rest of the day. And then at the end of the day, at sunset, is what's called iftar. So that's where you have your big meal, but you break your fast first with a date and some water. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, the little dates. They're, they're actually pretty yummy. I don't know <laughs> how you feel about dates. Yeah, and not everybody fasts, right? Like, right. if you're like a nursing mother, obviously, right, right. you're not gonna fast. And that's kind of built into just Ramadan itself, right? Absolutely, yeah. So it's pregnant women, nursing women, if you're on your period for that week or however long it is, you don't have to fast. Um, usually older people don't because there's a lot of physical complications that come with that. There's not a lot of pressure because it's supposed to be still a joyous time and you're supposed to be celebrating and you're supposed to feel good about making this decision um, because they don't believe that God is 
forcing this on anybody and anybody's doing this under duress. So, yeah. So the whole point of the fasting kind of leads right into our, our next thing, which is mm -hmm. uh, the sort of self-reflection, self-improvement, um, contemplative aspect of Ramadan. So tell me more about that. Yeah, so it's really a, a quieter time during the fasting time. So you're not distracted by, oh, what am I gonna eat next and things like that. So you have time to spend thinking about how you can make yourself better. You know, how can I be a better partner how can I be a better parent? So that time is supposed to be a really spiritually fruitful time. You're supposed to work on improving your spiritual life. You're focusing on just improving just every aspect of your person during this time. Yeah, and it seems like like the fasting and all that sort of forces you to slow down. You know, like I'm comparing it to sort of the high holy days in Christianity, Christmas and Easter. Mm -hmm. And those can often be some of the most stressful, hectic, crazy oh, times. Man. Just we jam pack so much stuff. Yes. It's hard to have those more contemplative moments, but it seems like it's sort of worked in. And, and the fact that Ramadan is spread over an entire month mm -hmm. rather than like a single day kind mm -hmm. of, I think also helps with that process. Yeah, it helps you kind of form the habit, mm -hmm. you know, form the habit of watching what you say and making sure you're living a life of kindness and grace and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, and so the the last thing that I wanted to sort of talk about was the prayer component yes. of Ramadan. So tell me more, is there like specific prayers that we say, or I think there's like a specific prayer schedule that you follow, right? Yeah, so throughout the day, you're kind of, there's a schedule where you pray five times a day, I believe it is, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. Um, but from what I've learned, it's five different prayers. There's readings from the Quran and the prayers throughout the day. And so, I mean, honestly, it takes up quite a lot mm -hmm. of time, but that's the point. You're supposed right. to develop your relationship with God and all that, so yeah. yeah. Uh, so those are just a few of the things that, that we learned uh, from Ramadan, just mm -hmm. kind of looking at it and reading about it this week. Um, yeah, there's definitely some some really good, like hearty sort of spiritual practices oh, yeah. that we can definitely like apply to our lives even in if we're in sort of a different faith or a different religious background. Mm -hmm. But yeah, one other thing that we can do during this time um, as Christians is we can just be kind and considerate and respectful to people celebrating Ramadan as, they, as they're fasting throughout the day. Um, you know, just like don't go out of your way to, you know, eat a giant juicy burger right. in front of them. You know, just like, yeah, be kind and, and respectful. Yeah. Know that this is happening. Um, and maybe even do some more research on your own. Um, just learn something new. Absolutely. And you know, people like to talk about the things that they believe in, you know, so take this opportunity, like you said, to educate yourself. If there's someone in your life that's Muslim and they're um, celebrating Ramadan, take this as an opportunity to learn and expose yourself to something that you wouldn't normally see or be around. Okay, so um, hopefully maybe a little bit of our curiosity rubs off on you. This is a great opportunity for us to, to learn, for us to um, focus on those spiritual practices that, that promote like healthy spiritual lives. And this teaches us that there is a lot to gain from learning about other religions and other um, rituals and holidays. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, definitely in the comment section below, um, share your own Ramadan stories if you have them, or share something that you've learned from Ramadan if you don't necessarily celebrate it yourself. Um, but yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it from us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.